This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for all your website needs. As you may know by now, we're all about taking waste material and turning it into something new. But as well as making useful products, we love to show you how to turn trash into treasure and making something truly beautiful. We're always on the hunt for new product and gift ideas, and someone recently gave us the idea of making a wine carrier. We've also got some fun new toys in the workshop, and we thought that this would be a great opportunity to test them out. So first off, we've got a brand new machine that might just revolutionize the way we sort out our plastic. So this little beauty can scan any piece of plastic and work out what type it is based on its density. And the reason that this is such a game changer is because we can identify plastic so much quicker, as well as figure out what that plastic is that doesn't have any logo on it. Here you can see we've got a bit of a mixed bag with polyethylene, polypropylene and polyurethane. We're going to be using polyethylene here, specifically HDPE, because it melts at a lower temperature and it's safe and easy to work with. So next we've got to process this plastic into something a little bit easier to melt and for this we're going to use our shredder. For the sake of this video we're swapping out the much safer and highly recommended hopper that comes as standard with this shredder for our own creation which makes it easier to film. But we don't recommend doing this at home. Stay safe out there. Of course, if you don't have a shredder, you can cut the larger pieces up with a good pair of scissors or a pair of shears. Bottle tops actually melt down on the panini press really well as they are, so they don't really need to be shredded, but this is so damn satisfying, we just wanted to do it anyway. Once that's all processed, we pop that into the oven to start heating through whilst we started melting all of the bottle tops on our good old second-hand panini press. While you're waiting for those lids to melt, we'd recommend using that time to learn new skills such as crochet or over-the-top leg drumming. Now we're often asked the question, why don't you melt all the plastic in the oven instead of using the panini press? So the panini press actually applies heat to the plastic at the top and the bottom, which is super efficient and melts really quickly, whereas the oven is much less direct. As you can see here, after about 20 minutes, it's barely melted that pink plastic, so we moved it over to the press and swapped it out for the melted red plastic. We find that the oven is actually far more suited to keeping molten plastic hot rather than doing the initial melting. After just a few minutes, you can see that the press did way more than the oven did. Another interesting thing that we find is how different grades of the same type of plastic can act differently. Whilst all the plastic that we're using here is HDPE, some of it is injection grade and some of it is extrusion grade. The red plastic that came from bottle tops is injection grade and therefore is super runny once it's molten and really easy to work with. However, the pink and white plastic come from bottles and are made by extrusion blow molding. These are much thicker and harder to work with even when they're brought up to the same temperature.
that combined plastic was all twisted and folded and brought back up the heat, we popped it into our plywood mold, pressed it with the bottle jack press and left it to cool overnight. If you don't have a bottle jack press, then don't worry, you can just use a load of clamps, but just be as quick as you can. If you did want to make your own press, then we actually have a video where we made our own DIY version. Check that out, we'll link it below. When it's ready to come out of the press, that new slab will simply fall out of the mould as HDP shrinks by about 3% as it cools. Initially, the red colour was very dominant, but as we started to run this through our thickness planer and smoothing out the top surfaces of the plastic, the pinks and the whites really started to show through. So we're going to be showing you two different methods to make this wine carrier, so before we do that, we ripped it in half over on our bandsaw. But before we show you our first technique, we wanted to take a minute just to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. As you may know already, we are massive fans of Squarespace. Even before they started sponsoring our content, we've been using their platform to manage and host our website for well over a year. We have an online store where we sell products made from 100% recycled plastic. And we chose Squarespace because we knew we would have total control of how we wanted it to look and function. Neither of us have any experience with building a website, so it was a little daunting at first. However, choosing Squarespace meant that we'd be working on a platform that was super user-friendly and we'd become familiar with how it worked nice and quickly. We recently added five new products to our range. And whilst this can sometimes be a bit of a daunting task with other services, Squarespace makes this super easy, as all you need to do is duplicate an old item and update all the details. This means that it's really simple to give your whole store a uniform look and feel. So if you'd like to give Squarespace a go, then head on over to squarespace.com forward slash brothers make to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code brothers make. A big thank you to Squarespace. Now let's crack on with his carriers. We'd worked on a few different designs for the shape before we settled on this one, which we then drew directly onto the plastic. We started this off by drilling out three holes, two of which were to hold the wine glasses, and the third one would go over the wine bottle neck itself. When you start to cut into the plastic, you can see just how good a job that bottle jack press does of making really solid sheets. To cut this first carry out, we're using our scroll saw. So we prefer to use our scroll saw over the band saw because it has a much thinner blade and therefore creates far less waste for us to then collect. A cheaper alternative would be to cut it by hand using something like a coping saw, which would do pretty much exactly the same job. It would just take a bit longer. We tried to cut as close to the line as we possibly could to try and reduce the amount of cleanup we had to do later, but also to reduce the amount of waste that we created. Once cut, we used our new favourite tool for plastic finishing, a card scraper. This works great because it creates shavings as opposed to a fine dust, which makes cleaning up super easy. We then took it over to our workbench flip up router table to chamfer all of the edges, which finishes it off really nicely and makes it a lot more comfortable to handle. Now onto our second method, and here we get to show you another very exciting brand new toy of ours. We very recently added a Stepcraft D840 CNC machine to our lineup. This opens a huge range of possibilities of the things we can cut and produce in our workshop. 
We drew up the same shape design as we did earlier in the Aspire software by Vetric, and for an additional little touch, we added the Brothers Mate logo just on the top surface. Then we screwed the second half of our blank to the bed and let the CNC get to work. This was the first time we've actually used it since setting the machine up, and as you can see, we were super excited. We're using a two millimeter cutter here, which does produce some fine shavings. So we're using our dedicated HDPE dust extraction system to make sure we collect it all. We do have a full enclosure for this machine and plan on using an HDPE waste board so that all of the shavings could be collected and reused nice and easily. But we were way too pumped to give this a go. So you will see those next time we use this CNC in one of our videos. Once we took it off the machine, there was a wafer thin tab to cut through, and then we took it over to our router and chamfered all the edges in the exact same way we did the last one. Right, I think it's time that we grab a bottle and a couple of glasses and see how well this thing works. So there's two different methods that you can use for this lovely little gift idea. The only other step we did was to give both of these wine carriers a quick once over on our polishing mop. This doesn't sand the surface at all, but the small amount of friction that builds up gives it a really nice sheen. And if you do have a CNC, this would be a great idea for a product that you could produce on a larger scale and sell in larger quantities. In fact, let us know if you think that we should be turning these into a product that we sell on our website and we can look into doing it. And if you have any other ideas of stuff that we could potentially make with our brand new CNC, then drop a comment below and we might add it to the list. Thank you so much for watching the video and an extra special, wicked, lovely, wonderful, legendary thank you goes over to the Brotherhood over on Patreon. We love you, each and every one of you, in your own special way. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks. <laughs>